Hello and welcome back to The Insider at Home. The Insider is the show that we created to get insights on the sport, to talk with the champions, to talk with the owners, to talk with riders and to talk with the team managers. But today we talk with a champion, with a global champions Grand Prix winner. We had a big show in Valkenswaard and it is time to talk to the Grand Prix winner. So welcome to the show, Belgian winner, Gregory Watle. Gregory, welcome. Thank, great to have you with us. Hi, hello. Um, Gregory, um, Valkus Waard was one of the few five-star shows at the level after the corona restrictions. Um, how was that corona lockdown for you and, and for your horses, and especially for, uh, for Nevados? What did you do in the meanwhile? Uh, okay, we have uh, a lot of things to do at home. Of course, it was a big change for all of us. Uh, we had to stay home for a few weeks or even a few months. For sure, like all the horses had a different plan. Uh, they planned the young ones, uh, kept the trainings, and the old ones, like maybe Nevados, uh, we use it like uh, to do like breeding uh, seasons. Um, of course, we didn't know when it started uh, in March how long time it's going to be. That's why a little bit the, the, the difficult uh, part to manage the, the best plan for them. In July, when it started to have a few shows, then we adapted the, the plan. Uh, for many horses and of course for also for Nevados. Then I started to to do a little bit more training with him uh, beginning of July to, then to try to have him ready for the few next shows or big shows coming like uh, Balkans like week, last week or Central Bay or these shows now. Um, the old season went into the bin and a new season comes out with new shows at new locations at new dates. Um, for you and, and Nevados and of course with the other horses, um, was it then difficult to, to make a plan, a long-term plan? Uh, at, at that time, for sure, in April, May, it was impossible to make a plan because we even didn't know if we're going to have a show or not this year. I mean, show sure, that, of that level, we knew that we're going to have smaller shows uh straight when it's going to be open like we have every week two stars or nationals or even three star shows but we all know that we don't live with these shows uh we live with the bigger shows with five star shows and for sure for these horses like nevados um we keep them for these big shows otherwise it's better to to leave them at home yeah that was more or less my my, my next question um how was it to get nevados after a break such a long break uh, to get him back into the rhythm. What kind of horse is he? Is he straight away there? Is he straight away at the level? Or does he need some time to grow into it? Uh, no, no, he's, he's quick, ready. I mean, he has experience. If it was two years ago, it's going to be completely another story. Um, no, I, I did like uh, my plan. I did uh, beginning of July, uh, a smaller show, or middle of July, a smaller show uh, to start just to make him go. Then one big break, and then he did the uh, Valkans well, that, that was my plan to bring him there for this three or two or three five star show we're going to have now in September. Yeah, and it, uh, apparently it did work out. Every Grand Prix these days, uh, nowadays, is very important um, for you five star riders. When you walked the course, um, did it feel like an Evados course? Did it feel like a course that would suit him? Or did, did you have uh, worries on your mind? Um, I must say with Nevados, uh, how he is now since the last two years, uh, I'm not really worried about different uh, lines or different cores because I can adjust or adapt him quite well with everything. Nevados he is quite flexible. I mean, I can add one strike, I can do one left I need. Then uh, if it double or triple is like this or like that, that's not really something I worry about. I just need to have him relax because he gets quick stress. And I just need to, to ride good myself. And then if I do that, then normally he always have a good run. Yeah. Is that his biggest strength? Is that his, 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 his most powerful asset? That, that it doesn't really matter? That he, can, that he can suit all courses? Yeah, for sure. That's helped. Uh, that's helped. I think he has showed already a few times or many times. Like you said, uh, I didn't have any big wins even last year. But uh, it was a few times plays. A few times I was very good with one down or one down with jump off then we know, we all know that's good, but at the end, not good enough. Uh, then that's a, for sure the good thing, but also the main, the main quality is, is very careful. I mean, that's the thing that when they build uh, something very delicate, like uh, we have now quite uh, often, uh, very te technical line, uh, sometimes very uh, light that you cannot touch. 
uh, that for sure Nevada is very careful that it's helped me to, to feel to write better. Gregory, I can only be honest to you. I did not think you were going to win the Grand Prix. I did not mm. think you were, you, you, uh, that it was possible for you to win the Grand Prix. I always looked at Nevados as a horse that is, uh, that is quick, especially in smaller arenas. I did not think he would have the stride, but it was, you won that Grand Prix, you won that jump off by more than a second over all those big striding horses. So I, you have proven me wrong, and I think many other people as well, that he could really suit on such a big arena. And um, for you, was there any doubt about being able to win that Grand Prix? Ah, we, we all know, and uh, like uh, you, you have seen, there was many good and fast riders, like always, I will say, in the jump off. But if you want to win, if you want to try to win, and I, I for sure, I always try to win. I don't start in the jump off to be fifth, otherwise I, I don't start. Uh, even more if I have the horse who I know can go fast. Uh, we all know that sometimes fast, it's also, yeah, when you are third or fourth, you are also fast. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think for, for him, is uh, if it's a small arena or if it's a big arena, like I said, he's so careful. You can just go to the jump, push to the jumps, and for sure it makes it easier. And then you have to try to, to take the, the best turn. I just need to be careful on one thing with him. It's the right turns because sometimes you get a bit more stress. I don't know why since always on the right turns. And I think that's also why I didn't do the inside turn to, the, to that turn. I think you have seen in the jump off there. Yeah, because where you won this Grand Prix in the jump off um, was on that left turn and the third fence. It was an unbelievable distance that you found somewhere that, one, that not many people would have found or would have seen. That was a fantastic, um, that was a fantastic turn. That was the, the winning turn for you. Yeah, but uh, we all know when we start a jump off, we have our plan. We try to, to do as quick as possible to, 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 to win it. But we also need to have a bit of luck and we also need to let everything turn right. Is it bizarre to win a five-star Grand Prix with no public? How, 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 does it make a difference for you? Uh, do you think if there was public, you would have been even faster, even more motivated? Or is it just Gregory Watley in his own zone? No, I think for everybody it's the same. For sure, we all prefer when there is public, when you come in, there is a huge atmosphere. That's for sure nobody can, uh, can say that uh, we don't want it, we don't like it. But uh, we know how it is now. I think it's like the football player. If they play the final of Champions League final, they get motivated. They have to be motivated. And I think when we are in our uh, plan, our course, our jump off, then we just focus. We just take the risk like uh, it was a full crowd. Yeah. We've got a huge operation at home um, in the south of Belgium. Um, many horses, many riders riding for you as well. Um, what are the, the talents that we have to watch out for in 2021 from your stable? Uh, it's always difficult to, to say. I have for sure a few really nice uh, young horses, but they are so far too young to, to, to plan about something for next year. But like if we have to talk about the one who could be for next year, something who help for the Global League or for the Grand Prix Global Tour, for sure, I have a lot of hope for Fautil, the set Vallon, it's a nine years old. Um, yeah, he, did, he started to do another the, the Grand Prix, like yesterday, the two-star Grand Prix in Saint Tropez. Uh, I think it's something promising for the future, but we all know now uh, there's a big step between this 145, 150 class and this Global Tour Grand Prix, it's another world. Then before he is ready for that, he needs a few more months. And I have also a very nice uh, eight years old. I wrote him also in Vikings while in the two star Grand Prix. He's only eight. He's, uh, he was also clear there. It's Cocktail de Palma. Um, yeah, I think that's very, two very promising uh, prospects for the future. But let's see how it goes. I am uh, I'm always motivated. I'm also realistic that for, uh, to ride at that level with all these uh, top riders and top horses. The horse need to be more than good or more than very good. They need to be special to, to be in, in front with them. Yeah. And um, are they, because of Corona, are they behind on schedule or are they on schedule for your opinion, for your feeling? Those two horses. If I talk about these two I just mentioned now, it's totally is behind my schedule because uh, first, a few reasons, he's very sensitive, a little bit like Nevados was. Uh, Nevados only uh, arrived at the top level when he was uh, 10. Uh, Corey also uh, for different reasons. Uh, I had, for example, before Forlap or Conrad, they were ready when they were eight. Depends of the horses. 
uh, like I just said, now Cocktail is 18 already doing two star Grand Prix. Uh, then I think him he will be very quick already. Uh, yeah, because he has the mind for it, because he is like that. Cotil is uh, more sensitive, he needs more times. And for sure, like I wanted to have a plan this year for, to bring him for these big shows. And okay, I fell off uh, with him in January in Oliva, I broke my shoulder. Uh, then after it took a bit time to to get a bit of confidence again. Then Corona was there, and we were at home, and then do no, do a few shows, and it just yeah, for sure, is behind the schedule for him. Okay, um, uh, people who are or seem to be on schedule um, are some of those under twenty five riders: Anna Kelnerova, Lucas Porter, um, who else was there? Emily Moffitt, um, Philip Houston. And they all came through in, the, in that Grand Prix. They didn't get the experience or the rhythm this year either. And all came through on four faults, only four faults in a, in a very tough and technical Grand Prix. Um, how, how important are those classes for these riders, those under 25 riders, a chance to, to knock on the door and get there? And that's for sure very important. Uh, okay, these riders you have said now, it's uh, maybe uh, not always the best example because they have done already uh, yeah. quite... Uh, Please last year and before last year, uh, but for sure for these also good young riders and we have also many good example in Belgium because we have quite a few. Um, that for sure they could not do these big shows and that's uh, they are maybe a little bit ahead. But these riders they are anyway good with a good system with a good uh, plan behind. Uh, that for sure maybe if it's not this, this year they're gonna be ready next year. That I am not uh, scared for them. Yeah, next year. 2021. What does 2021 bring for Gregory Watley? I hope we have the Olympic Games. <laughs> That's yeah. uh, the hope of uh, many riders. You want list? Yeah. yeah. Um, then the rest, uh, let's see. I mean, I always, I never do any plan. Okay. I do, I have uh, many plans for myself, for my horses for everything but uh, about result about hope i always take what's coming i already already had many experience that sometimes we plan something and nothing goes through like the plan or there is always something coming in the middle of your way injured selling a horse or these things that it's very always difficult to to make a, a plan like you want for the next season that i always try to do the best for the horse try to do the best for my system uh, to try to do the best that we can leave from it because I need to leave from it and then the, the rest has to follow or not and then uh, if I do uh, the thing right I think the, the, the results follow. I think that's a, that's a beautiful um, summary to, uh, to close this interview and um, it's, uh, it's something very um, worthy for our viewers to take in and uh, to let it sink in. There's a lot of experience and a lot of thought into that. Um, Gregory, first of all Congratulations on the victory in Valkeswaard. Second of all, I will never ever underestimate Nevados again, whether it's a small arena or a big arena, I will never do it again. And third, thank you very much for taking the time to sit with us and join us here at uh, the Insider at home. Wish you best of luck on uh, the rest of the season, whether it's outdoors, indoors, but we cannot wait to have you back on, um, on the Paris Panthers, hopefully in uh, 2021 and for sure in the launching Global Champions 2 Grand Prix. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. And to you at home as well. It's been a while. I hope you enjoyed Valkenswaard with all the live broadcasts. I hope you've enjoyed this one with Gregory Wautle. And uh, we will stay with you in the future. There's a lot coming at you. So keep an eye at all our socials, whether it's Facebook or Instagram. And of course, our website, which is going through a big change as well. So reason enough to keep track of GC Global Champions, whether it's the Longy Global Champions Tour or Global Champions League. We bring you the best in show jumping.